I'm here with uh, Judy Baker, CEO of Argo Gold. And Judy, you want to give us really the 10 minute pitch on Argo and afterwards, I suggest you and I touch base, uh, basically talk about certain points and, and have questions, a round of questions. But with that, I really like to leave it to you. Okay. Um... Uh, Argo Gold, um, high rate gold exploration, Northwestern Ontario. Um, for, we're a publicly traded company, uh, Canadian Stock Exchange, the European Exchanges, and the OTCQB. So I'm going to start with the investment opportunity. Um, basically, why invest in Argo Gold? Basically, it's the Uchi Gold project discovery potential and the ongoing exploration activity we have at the Uchi Gold project, where we do have high grade gold mineralization. And we've had significant exploration programs in 2019, 2020, and 2021. Talbot Lake is actually another very good gold project in Argo Gold in the same part of the world. Again, we've got 50,000 ounces high grade gold there. Um, and with lots of exploration potential. The um, project has been sitting in a uranium company for 20 years. So Argo Gold was happy to pick that up in June of 2020 mm -hmm. after years of negotiations. Um, Argo Gold has a third big project, the Herdman Silver Zinc project, um, 3 million tons right at surface, 2 million ounces of silver, 70, surrounded by 70 square kilometers of exploration ground. And um, what I really, we've got that drill permitted last year. And what I'd really like to do is dividend it to shareholders or a return on capital, get it set up in a silver company. And I've been working on that um, over the last couple of months. The Argo Gold's well-owned uh, institutions uh, and insiders are 50%. So. Uh, Eric Sprott, other institutional investors um, make up at least 40%, including Exilient Capital Management, Northfield Capital, and then the team uh, is 10%. Can, uh, it's a value play. Argo Gold only has a market cap of 5 million Canadian. So, um, you know, we're very low on the totem pole for three big 100% um, owned projects. And I'll also note here that the company has a million dollars in cash and shares on mm -hmm. the books. So of the, the market, so we, we do have cash and shares in other companies. So that's the summary investment opportunity for Argo Gold. And now I'll just run into a couple little slides just to uh, zoom in on what we're up to. Okay, so Northwestern Ontario is the focus area of the company. Why we actually went there in 2016 why completely underexplored relative to the Abitibi where all the big boys are. Um, but, you know, Red Lake is a hundred year mining camp, 27 million ounces has come out of there. Pickle Lake, uh, Muscle Whites mine 200,000 ounces for 20 years. And it, it, North, Ontario or Canada in general is a very good jurisdiction to work in. Um, you know, the laws of the land are known. Um, so that's a, this is a snapshot, Uchi Lake Gold Project, Nangela Lake peripheral to Red, the Red Lake Camp and Talbot Lake over closer to Pickle Lake, um, close to the road to the Ring of Fire, which has recently been permitted. So, but, which is fantastic for uh, advancement of projects in Northwestern Ontario. Um, so what's exciting about um, Northwestern Ontario, of course, the famous Great Bear discovery. Great Bear made a discovery on the road to Red Lake, 25 kilometers south of Red Lake. How could you make a discovery on off the road in a hundred year camp? Well, the reason is um, there's a lot of overburden. The rock just isn't right at surface. And so, so um, you have to rely on geophysics, geochemistry, overburden stripping, and drilling to uh, explore for gold. There's fewer rocks around where you can bang the ground. 
Um, the map in the uh, bottom corner shows um, the uh, dark green bomber volcanics, three billion years old. On top of that is the light green confederation volcanics, 2.7 billion years old. Exploration geologists have looked for gold mineralization in the confederation volcanics for 50 years. Great Bear is the first big high grade discovery that made initial, initial drill hole in 218. A north of Argo Gold's Uchi Gold project uh, is Spring Pole, which is 5 million ounces of low grade with some high grade. So the Confederation can be known for multi ounce gold deposits as well. But um, generally, it's considered very prospective with very few discoveries. And another reason we talked we talked about overburden. The other reason is just lack of infrastructure. There's one road to pick Red Lake. There's one road to pick a lake. There's some forestry roads and there's some ice roads. So um, infrastructure is minimal relative to the Abitibi as well. So as you can see here, a Great Bears um, project is at the uh, the structure bounding the Confederation volcanics, as is Argo Gold. There's volcanics in the north. You've got meta sediments in the south. You've got a major crustal structure there. If you look over in the Abitibi, what do you have? Where Cadillac Porcupine Duster or Cadillac Larder Lake Break? What do you have? You've got volcanics in the north, major structure, meta sediments in the south, same as you have in this camp. So I think this structure is going to be much more economically important in the next 50 years as that more exploration activity opens up because of the Great Bear discovery. Okay. Um, so this is a bit of a zoom in. You can see the Red Lake camp in the um, top corner. Uh, you can see the Great Bear Dixie project, 25 kilometers south. Uh, Confederation Volcanics over at the Uchi Gold project. So you can see where the Argo Gold is. So it's the same volcanics proximal to a major structure. It's a high grade narrow vein quartz systems. We have over, they had overburden there. That's why the discovery wasn't made till 218. We have a couple meters of overburden where we are too. Um, outcrop again, little to none. So you, it's hard to walk around in the bush and find rocks sticking out of the ground. Again, you have to rely on geochemistry, geophysics, overburden stripping and drilling. So um, it's, it's um, harder, relatively harder exploration, uh, but still worth it. You're in a great jurisdiction. It has a history, history of producing camps and there's good where you have some high grade gold mineralization, there's opportunities to find a lot more. Um, at the Uchi Gold Project, what do we have? We have, we have multiple, we have multiple areas of high grade gold mineralization close to surface, at surface, on multiple mineralized trends. It's a big project with a map there shows about, um, about 10 square kilometers, but the whole Uchi Gold project that Argo Gold has staked is more like 25 square kilometers. Um, you can see the, ma the major trends um, there. This map has all the historical drill results uh, and channel sampling results to date. Um, at Wolco, we've got about 400 meters of high grade, or sorry, we've got 400 meters of anomalous gold, and then we've got a smaller section of high grade gold. Um, at Northgate, we've got 500 meters of anomalous gold or low grade gold, and then we've got about 225 meters of actually where we're getting high grade at surface or very close to surface where we're talking, you know, kind of 18 to 22 to 25 to 30 ounces per ton. So we've got some good high grade gold mineralization. Um, uh, we've also done some pretty aggressive step out drilling on the mineralized trends just to see, you know, where we're getting low grade gold, where we're not getting gold mineralization on the trends. Anywhere we get low grade gold on the, on the mineralized trends, we think that that's perspective to find high grade gold in that area because mineralization can uh, pinch and swell and ebb and flow in the structure. 
as long as there's some low-grade gold, um, we do see potential for high-grade as well uh, at dip, at depth. Um, this is a zoom in of WOCO. I already talked about that. Again, we, we've got mineralization over 400 meters. We've got a smaller area of very high grade gold. Um, we're getting multi ounce per ton over a couple meters. Um, and we get that not only in drill holes, but also right at surface. So um, we, uh, we see that both. Um, Northgate, after the 2021 drill pro program, Northgate looked the most prospective. Um, we're, we're getting, um, we have 500 meters of strike length of gold mineralization, low grade, but we have high grade, we're getting high grade over 225 meters. And again, like some good numbers in terms of um, nine to 22, 26 gram per ton gold um, over, a, over a meter, a meter and a half. Um, and again, we get that not only in drill holes, but also right at surface when we've done overburden stripping. Uh, rain gold is a, a parallel mineralized trend. Um, we did, you know, we got really good channel sampling results over 15 meters of strike length. We were getting a width of about two meters, about almost an ounce per ton. Um, drilling though, didn't, we didn't get results. So we ran into a new sweep, we, we got a gram. We got low grade results, but um, so we think, I think that the team doesn't, I think we need to um, brush, brush up on what the structure is out here, what the correlation of the mineralization is to the sulfides, to the structure. So we've got some work to do out here, but this is the first time this area has ever been drilled was mm -hmm. last summer. Talbot Lake, um, 50,000 ounces of, four, this is Argo Gold's second big gold, project in Northwestern Ontario. We picked it up from a uranium company uh, where it's been sitting for 20 years. 50,000 ounces, of 14 gram per ton. Uh, there's mineral, the mineralization is also associated with, with um, banded arm formation, which can be quite prolific uh, gold deposits like muscle white, 200,000 ounces over 20 years. We've staked 23 line kilometers that have indications of High grade of that could be host um, mm -hmm. iron formation, type, banded iron formation type gold mineralization. So we have targets, we have drill targets right around the um, known high grade gold. And we also plan to do airborne geophysics uh, and ground work on the 23 line kilometers of prospective uh, mm -hmm. iron formation. So uh, we're, well, I think we're working on our permit. I think we're very close to getting permit at Talbot with the Ring of Fire just being permitted and things that moving forward uh, here in Northwestern Ontario. Uh, finally, the big last big project in Argo Gold is the Herdman Silver Zinc, 3 million tons right at surface, 2 million ounces of silver. Uh, we've got 70 square kilometers out there, lots of targets. Again, it's, it's on the intercept of, um, to actually three structures. Um, the, um, met, in this case, the sediment, meta sediments are to the north, volcanics to the south, and then cross cut by the cap structure. Um, so this is pr um, pretty perspective in terms of those 70 kilometers of uh, drill targets identified in the area of this project. So I'd like to put this in a, in a specific company for shareholders. So shareholders would get a return or dividend to capital, hopefully on a one-for-one -one basis. Mm. Uh, and we'd launch um, Silver Co. either individually as on its own or in conjunction with another silver company or a growing silver vehicle. Um, so just in summary, 66 million shares out, um, good shareholders, million in cash and shares, 5 million Canadian market cap, um, and uh, yeah, the share price is low, but I think that the company's assets are 100% owned. Uh, it's got good investors um, and we'll have our last set of results out from last summer's work program um, and a plan for the 2020 expiration season out uh, shortly. So that's a wrap uh, for my presentation. If you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Okay, Judy, thanks so much. Um, 
I think that was a good uh, high level uh, uh, introduction, three projects. Uh, the, the, the narrow vein uh, hosted uh, uh, Target Uchi, Talbot as, as a new uh, uh, addition that you may be able to, to test and drill test this, this, this season for the first time. Um, looks exciting to me. It's a banded iron formation and you pointed out there's other, you know, the reference there would be a, another mine close by that, that produced 200,000 ounces per, per annum. The reference for the narrow narrow grade or narrow, narrow uh, vein hosted is more or less a uh, um, uh, uh, great bear, uh, of course. That that that's that's well, you were in the area before they made their discovery, uh, but uh, of course that that has opened up the potential for this uh, whole belt there. And then as a as an addition, so to speak. Uh, uh, a uh, relatively early stage, but relatively large uh, silver zinc uh, project that you want to spin out. Is it, would you think that that is a fair summary? That is a very fair summary. Okay, Judy, I, I, I promise we should do more, uh, uh, let's say conversation, more interviews, once you're actually getting uh, uh, active uh, with, with, uh, during the season, when do you anticipate to start working there? Mid-May, late May? Something? Late May. Late May, okay. We'll look forward to that, uh, Judy. And with that, um, let's, let's uh, just end, end here and, and uh, have another conversation soon. Thank you, Sven. Have a great day. Thank you.